Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone. I am excited to be here today. Spring is always a great time of the year and a busy time for nonprofit organizations. And I would imagine your organization's extremely busy at this time. Mine sure is. I've got a large major donor event coming up next month. It's a weekend event that uh, we bring in uh, uh, hundreds of major donors that come in and we present our cause and our strategy and where we're headed in the future to our major donors and give them opportunities to partner together. So it's an exciting event. We did it on a smaller scale last year at this time in the middle of COVID, but we did it in Florida and had a good attendance, but uh, we have a lot more people. We're almost doubling our event this year in size and we're excited for that. If you have got an event or an activity, a walkathon, jogathon, if you're doing a car wash, whatever you're doing this spring, leave that down in the comment section for me so I can see and uh, let me know how you're feeling about things. If you're excited, if you're feeling a little apprehensive, a little nervous, uh, I think Every one of us in this at this time are a little nervous about our events. Just to we uh, we've kind of become a little gun shy over the last few years. Not really sure exactly what to expect. It seems like we start and then have to slow down all of a sudden. But uh, I am optimistic about activities for this spring and this summer, and especially for the fall. And I hope you are as well too. I hope you can really enjoy some opportunities. If you're trying some new things, put those down below too. I'd like to find out if you're trying some new activities and I'd like to find out uh, what, what those are. I'm always open for creative ideas. Well, let's dive into our question for today. Our question today is from Kay in Columbia, Missouri. And Kay asks, should our organization consider asking our staff to raise their own support? Well, Kay, what a great question. I appreciate that so much. Um, I will have to start off by saying I'm a little biased myself. Uh, I raise my own support. My wife and I have done so for the last 38 years. Our organization from the very beginning, from its founding in 1951, had as the concept that they were going to be funded by individuals outside the organization and not only the organization but the staff as well too and i really believe that that was the secret to our success and why we are so large as a nonprofit organization we had uh, individuals who maybe went to college at the university of wisconsin heard about our organization and decided to join our staff they went back to their hometown of Appleton, Wisconsin, or Oshkosh, or Cable, Wisconsin, and brought our organization to that city. Maybe none of the people had ever heard of our organization, but they heard of Susie Staffer, who came from the University of, of Wisconsin and loves our organization. They love Susie, they trust her, and they start to give to our organization as a result. And that's why I believe we've seen such dynamic growth of our organization over the last 70 years is that we have really been able to have, in a sense, a sea of ambassadors, individuals who are out there promoting our cause and being advocates for what we're doing. So from the standpoint of recruiting individuals to be advocates of your organization, it's extremely helpful. I have had, I personally, uh, my wife and I both have been impacted. We're impacted by organization in college. We bring that story with us wherever we go. We talk about it. We share about it. Our kids were impacted as college students by our organization. So as a result, we are really strong advocates. And your staff will be advocates of your organization as well, too. Now, what you've got to make sure is you need to make sure that you have buy-in from your staff and your board on that. Because if you decide to move this direction, on one hand, it's really a financially wise decision. Because I found that anywhere between 30 and 40 percent, sometimes more, of a nonprofit's budget is salaries. If you can have individuals raise their own salaries that will take a lot of the onus 
off of leadership and the organization to fund those. Nonprofit organizations can then focus in on raising the corporate money. We would never be able to do half of the programs or have half the strategies that we do if our staff didn't raise their own funding. As an example, just even on my team, I'm able to bring on individuals who can be full-time representatives for the organization and I don't have to pay them a salary. They raise their own support and as a result, I only have to pay for their operating expenses, travel, phone, um, entertainment with donors, and those kinds of things make it so much easier when they raise their own support. There needs to be buy-in though. You need to make sure that your staff and your board do agree with the concept and they will support the decisions that are made. In addition, you need to send people to worthwhile training and there are some solid organizations that do training for nonprofit organizations. One of the organizations that I like a lot is Support Raising Solutions. They put on a boot camp. Steve Shadrack is the director of this effort and the president, and they put on a boot camp for nonprofit organization staff and teach them how to raise their money. There's also a lot of very good books out there on raising money for those individuals who are interested in raising their own personal support. So I would, I'll put some of those books down in our resources below the names of some of those books. But you've got to really make sure that your people are trained. Now what they're going to want to do is focus in on monthly gifts. So they're trying to build that amount of money for a lifetime. And so even though uh, you may they may start out with a two or three year commitment they should be thinking about raising money for the long haul they really shouldn't just be looking for short time so as a result even though we will accept you would accept single gifts from people uh, it's always better to get monthly commitments 30 50 100 150 200 400 500 a month to help with the efforts you're going to want to set for them a goal which would be $36,000 a year or $3,000 a month. Make sure you establish that goal across the board uniquely. Our organization, everyone from the president on down, all raise their own support and they raise the same amount of money. Now there's extra that is raised for some of the greater obligations. Our, our president of our organization travels internationally a lot. As a result, has to raise more money for that kind of travel than someone who works on a local college campus. And so you've got to look at some of those special gifts. But if, if you set a salary of $36,000, an example, or $48,000, $4,000 a month, uh, they're going to have to start chipping away in increments of, as I said, 30, 50, 100, 150 or more a month till they reach that $3,000 goal. And that's what they've got to inform their partners, prospective partners, of the amount of money they're trying to raise and that they're looking for gifts of those monthly amounts. Now, if someone says, can I give a gift of $1,200 instead of $100 a month? The answer is yes, of course. Uh, but what you're going to want them to do is commit to a, a annual gift of $1,200. Uh, there has to be a distinction between whether they're going to raise it annually or whether this is just a single gift for now and there's probably not a second gift coming later. So that's important because we appreciate, we love, we need those single gifts, but we really are looking for that ongoing commitment. That is going to sustain the person and keep them in service to your organization over the long haul. So those are all very, very important questions. It's not an effort that should be taken or jumped into lightly, Kay. So I would really look at all the opportunities that are out there. I would read some of the books, talk to some of the people like Steve Shadrach in the boot camp, and find out what is it that it takes, what kind of person, how much money, what are the recommended amounts, and what does it take to shift your organization over to a support raising or ministry partnership development aspect of your organization. So I hope, Kay, that helped you. And as always, I just appreciate these questions so much. And if you aren't already a subscriber, please subscribe. If you like what you heard, we're building our community that's making a difference in the world. Follow us on Instagram. 
on Twitter, on Facebook. We've got a Facebook group out there. And, and also, we are just glad to have you as part of this community. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Watch this next video, and I'll see you in the next one.